you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex Bennett, and uh, uh, we had some uh, time off for a couple of days here, and I don't even know how to run this anymore. <laughs> yes, I do. In fact, uh, we are going to talk to an old friend right now. Ladies and gentlemen, San Francisco, California is home to one of the most upbeat, positive human beings I know. That means I don't know very many positive human beings. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. Yeah, Alex. How you doing? How you doing? Ah. Do you have a nice Fourth of July? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, it brings out the patriotism in me. Uh, during World War II, my father served in a small island overlooking the Pacific, Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not my joke, but I, love, I don't know whose it is, but I love that. Joke. Yeah, well, you know, if you don't know who it who it belongs to, I guess you can steal it, huh? I guess. So. What What are the rules on stealing jokes? I mean, uh, um, uh, I used to have a theory that I would, every time I use somebody else's line on the air, I would I would give them credit. Right. Up to a point. I think there was like a two-year period where I would do that. And then I went, it's mine. <laughs> you know, it's mine. In most cases, it's mine. It's not Feldman's anymore. So, you know, right. Right, it's not Bubbles well, I anymore. I think the, uh, the history of uh, entertainment, I think uh, a lot of things have been stolen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard that... Uh, you probably know this more than I, that Charlie Chaplin uh, supposedly took a lot of his stuff from some English music hall. Uh, what was his comedian. name? I'm trying to remember his name now. But, yes, he was a very famous British comedian. And I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, and, in fact, Chaplin invited him to the United States, and they met with each other. But, oh, okay. uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. How dare me that I can't remember his name. Oh, well. Uh, but no, it, it is said that he stole a lot of what he did from that British comic who, I mean, Chaplin grew up in Britain, so it was obvious that he could have stolen from him very easily. God, I can't remember. He was a very gentleman. As opposed to the little tramp, he was the opposite. He was kind of the gentleman. He had a cane, I believe, and, uh, you know, uh, wore tails, I think. Um, but, and, I, and I'm trying. But he was okay with Chaplin taking this stuff. If I had my friend Shecky here, he'd tell me immediately who the guy was. And I seem, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, let me see here. Wait a minute, Charlie Chaplin. Let me. You see, you can go to uh, the internet. Uh, here I go, Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin influences. Let's see if that will do it. Influences. Okay. Charlie Chaplin influences. Uh, uh, let's see here. Overview of Charlie's life. Actors who talk about Charlie Chaplin, what teaches them. Uh, echoes from the cinema Chaplin history. Uh, okay. Charlie Chaplin. Who did he steal from? <laughs> <laughs> he steal from. Let's see here. Who did he steal from? Uh, who stole Charlie Chaplin's body? Do you remember that story? I do, yeah. yeah. I was in Switzerland. All, all I'm getting is uh, holding him for ransom. Charlie Chaplin's coffin. That's all I oh, get. Yeah, hell his remains for ransom. Charlie Chaplin. Who did he steal from? Uh, British comic, okay. British comic influence. Influence. Okay, let's see if it comes up. Uh, bu 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 no, 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 no. Huh. It, it, it may, it, amazing. I can't find him. But I know who we'll you're talking about. Holy Shecky. I know who you're talking about. Uh, and and um, it, uh, it was uh, 
he was very famous, and uh, he was very famous in England. He wasn't famous here. And uh, he, uh, he was a silent star, and they say that the tra- chaplain stole a lot of what he did from him. So anyway. Uh, well, people we don't know if he was angry about it. What about what I call unknowledgeable stealing? In other words, uh, people who hear something, they like it, they put it out of their mind, and then years later it becomes something they do and they think they invented it. A uh, good example, George Harrison's uh, My Sweet Lord was really, uh, uh, what was the song by the, uh, oh, God, now nah, my mind is, I just, I shouldn't do this uh, see the- anymore. I can't remember these things. Uh, my Sweet Lord was, he's so fine. He's so oh, fine, yeah. I want to make him mine. Da, 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 da. Was yeah. that the Shirelles? The, not the Shirelles, it was the Chantels or the, uh, uh, somebody with a C, some group with a C. But anyway, he's so fine, and uh, by the way, they won the suit. And then uh, there's a song uh, that uh, Rod Stewart did, uh, If You Think I'm Sexy and You Want My Body, uh, it was stolen from a song by Jorge Ben in Brazil, uh, which I have played many times, and it is that same exact song. Okay, and, and he, he sued, sued. He sued, and he won. Oh, he did. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, he turned over the money, I think, to charity, if I remember correctly. But uh, the question is. Did Rod Stewart steal it, or did he hear it, and it implanted itself in his brain, and then when he was coming up with a melody for a song, that's what came up, you know? Yeah, I think it could be subconscious. It could, you might not know you're stealing it, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you ever subconsciously stolen a joke? Uh, yeah, I'm not... Uh, I forget what the joke was, but I remember... Oh, yeah, that somebody else had done that. Of course, Couple times, yeah. Of course, you know when you come up with a line like uh, my favorite, one of my favorite lines of yours was uh, that uh, uh, you're not afraid of uh, identity theft, then somebody else can have no life. Yeah, uh, which is a very funny line. But well, thanks. Um, and it's the trouble with one-liners; they're very easy to steal. So. Well, forget about it, stealing it. You know, that's not an inobvious joke. I'm not. You know, questioning your comedic abilities, you came up with a great joke, but you would seem that somebody else would maybe think of it too. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, and then there's some lines that are so unique that you know, if somebody uses it, you know they stole it. So, you know. Right, and uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes you don't see it. Sometimes some jokes are so obvious you don't see them. I heard uh, Jay London had a, what was his joke? I, our family had an Olympic pool. We went swimming once every four years. <laughs> what comedian was that? What the com- other one was, I have a stepladder. I never knew my real ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Whose line was that? Jay, Jay London. He's an L.A. comic. Oh, that's very funny. Yeah. I never had a stepladder. I never knew his father. <laughs> I never knew my real ladder. <laughs> See, the, the great jokes are the ones that are so obvious you don't see them, and then uh, the it, other ones would be the ones that are uh, so not obvious. They're well, also, you, you, say, you say, why the fuck didn't I think of that? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I uh, years ago, um, I came up with an idea for a show. I mean, this... This this is when I was doing uh, when I was doing cable here in New York. I was watching one night, and there was this guy. His name was Richard Rothman, and he used to what he used to do. He was a PR guy, and you're not supposed to make money off public access, but he figured out a way to make money off public access because people would hire him to do PR, and then he put them on his little cable show. All right, so that's kind of mm-hmm. like they're paying him to be his PR their PR guy. But he also has them on his cable show, so he's not really taking money for them being on the cable show. He's taking money for being a PR guy, all right? So we would have this endless parade of talentless human beings come on. 
<laughs> and either be interviewed or sometimes even perform. And some of them were so terrible. I found this show absolutely riveting. And I said to myself, you know, there's a show in this in which we could run a show where we have nothing but people who come on and some of the talent is good and some of the talent is bad, but we take on all comers. And then we maybe have a panel of people who, who sit there and, and, uh, and uh, criticize them or whatever. And I, that just wandered around in my brain for like a year or two. And then all of a sudden, here comes the gong show. You know? Yeah, there you go. And I went, well, I missed that one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> See, that would have worked. Yeah. I mean, essentially what the gong show was is what I had come up with. Uh, although I have to credit Richard Rothman for being so bad that he actually came up with it first but didn't realize it. Yeah. Um, so, and, and there's nothing more fun than bad talent. I mean, I think what everybody loves about things like America's Got Talent and so on is not the great people. I mean, you go, wow, they were really a great singer and whatever. But also the acts that are bad. Yeah, American they, Idol. God, I could do that. American Idol thrived on that. Their auditions. Mm-hmm. They loved the auditions because once the auditions were over, the show lost a lot of its fun because you, you had these people. The worst thing about, about singers or people who want to be singers is in their mind they have this great voice, but it doesn't come oh, yeah, out. It doesn't so come. diluted that that's the the funny part. They don't realize how horrible they are. They think no. In their brain, they actually hear themselves being good. You know, uh, and, and when they get criticized, they're shocked. Well, you know, you go on those shows. You don't just get criticized. You get mortalized. You know, you get brutalized. Uh, why anybody would go on one of those shows, I have no idea. But, you know, like, for instance, I was watching. I, we love America's Got Talent. We really better love Brit- Britain's Got Talent, which we don't get over here, but I managed to lay my hands on it. And Britain's Got Talent is exactly the same show. It's Simon Cowell and so on. But it 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 runs faster. It runs over a seven-week period, and that's it. In and out, nobody gets hurt. Here in America, it goes on forever. But we happen to like the show um, and uh, because it has a rather sweet nature to it. Uh, and yet they give away if the winner gets a million dollars. That's a lot of money, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good prize. And then you look at the writing underneath and it says um, the million dollars will be paid off as an annuity over 40 years. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> or you can take the immediate annuity and not wait the 40 years, which means you probably take $50,000 and go home, you know. Yeah. Uh, but in 40 years? I mean, what? What are you that poor? You just can't shell out the million bucks to these people? <laughs> you know. So that'd be uh, what fifty thousand a year for forty years. Fifty thousand a year for forty years. So probably it says if you take a one-time annuity payment, that would be probably fifty thousand dollars, right? Uh, I don't know the lottery. If they, if, you, if you take the lump sum all at once, it, it's a little less than half. So. Well, no. If you take in in the lottery, what you're doing is you can take a, a lump sum payment. In other words, the taxes are already paid on it once you take that lump sum, I believe. And so you're taking it minus all the taxes and everything like that, I, if I remember correctly. But, okay. you know, it's, uh, I think the way to do it is to take, the, uh, to take that lesser amount, you know, and just take it all at once and be done with it. Um, at my age, I would take it all. <laughs> You know, we we don't have forty years. <laughs> you know, if I wanted it twenty years old and and it was going to be paid out over the next uh, fifty years or something like that, great. Okay, I'll do it that way. It's cheaper in taxes and everything else. But you know, but uh, anyway. So back back to stealing. So um, you know, stealing is uh, sometimes very conscious and sometimes very subconscious. Now, the one that we always knew as a, the the great comic thief 
you didn't even want him to show up at one of your shows and hear him laugh because you knew he would take the joke, was Robin Williams. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Yo, I think I think Robin, his mind was like, it would just pick up stuff. I don't think he consciously stole. You think it was a sponge thing? Yeah, I really do. His mind was just... It just and then it, was, it spit it out like a blender. Because I, I, I can't remember who it was told me he was riding in a, in a car one night with, uh, with Robin. And they were riffing as comics do, right? And he riffed a joke and then they riffed some more and then they talked and they drove a little more. And then all of a sudden Robin turned around and riffed back the line this other guy had told him. And he said he didn't know why that was, but there was this kind of sponge quality that he had yeah, in which yeah. he would uh, he would uh, meet, hear things and then immediately repeat it. And once it came out of his mouth, he believed it to be his. Exactly. And I think if, uh, if a comic ever said to Robin, hey, that was my joke, he would, I think he would give you money. He would not do it again. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I remember sitting one night at Cobb's Comedy Club in, when it was uh, down in the marina. And we were in the back room, and Robin Williams was on The Tonight Show. Oh, all the comedians were sitting around watching it because, of course, they wanted to see Robin work. And they're sitting there, and as he's doing his act, or as he's doing the jokes or whatever in the uh, in the, in the uh, uh, panel sit-down thing, one comedian after another is going, that's my joke. That's my joke. That's my joke. That's mine. Hey, just did mine. You know, that Robin, I, we never could figure out why he did that. And, and yet, comedians loved him, you know. Mm -hmm. He was a decent enough person. But, I mean, on several occasions, I called him on it. He, he had no great love for me because I would call him on it because my feeling is that if you've got a guy like Robin Williams and he steals your joke... I'm sorry, it's his forever. He's on The Tonight Show. He's all around, you know. He's the guy who's going to do it and take it from you. And then when you do it on stage because you refuse to give it up, people will say, oh, you stole that from Robin Williams. <laughs> you stole that. <laughs> yeah. So that, that I told him, I said, when people do that, when you do that, people suffer. Because they, it took them a lot more work to come up with that joke than it took you to do your material. You know, you can hire writers. They can't. And it always bothered me. It always bothered me. Uh, there was a, there was a, I'm trying to remember the name of the comic now, but this was down at the comedy store. And one night, he, some, some, he came up to Robin pushed him up against the wall and said, don't ever steal another fucking joke from me ever again. And his wife, Robin's wife, was off to the side with a checkbook out saying, how much do you want? <laughs> and she's like <laughs> writing out a check. He says, I don't want your fucking money. I want my material. You know? Wow. And, and I, um, I think that's, that's reasonable, you know? That you don't steal because somebody else worked hard to come up with that joke. It's it's kind of like you know, I, I don't know where, why people feel they can uh, just play music, uh, and that any music that's out there is theirs, and why they can download it, you know, for free, off of some kind of website that gives you free music, uh, because the writer, especially most writers, have one hit in them. And they make money off that hit for the rest of their life, unless you steal it. Yeah. You know, so. So everything has been, uh, let's see, screenplays have been stolen. That's well, everything in this business gets stolen, so it's nothing new. Well, you know, everything is. And it's it, hard to prove, like a screenplay. Well, my question to you is, is there anything original anymore? Probably not. Like, every joke's been done a thousand years ago it's just exactly. updated but it, they've all been done exactly exactly i mean uh uh you know if i uh, watch a movie i can i can point to stuff where other movies had had that in it i mean how how original can you get after you've had how many years of people doing stuff i mean since shakespeare 
you know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, you're bound. People, they're bound to be lifts from this and that and things that influence you. For instance, let's take you. You're, I consider you one of the most original comics around. There, really? Wow. Uh, yeah, there are very few people I think that I can compare you to. You are Larry Bubbles Brown, and that's it. But come on, there are people that you you that influenced you, right? And that a bit mm-hmm. of them is in the persona you use on stage. Am I right? I would think so. Do you? Can you name any? Well, let's see. I like. I kind of liked it when I was a kid. I like. I like Dangerfield. This guy. guy. <laughs> Just talking about how the world shit on you all the time because it does. That always appealed to me. Yeah, yeah. And I liked. Uh, I don't. I, he didn't influence me at all, but I love. I love Jonathan Winters. I don't know. I, there's nothing I have. How in about? How about? How about just in sound and style? Uh, Jackie Vernon. Yeah. Okay. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. People don't know I who like we're the, talking about when we say Jackie Vernon, but if. If you lived back 50 years ago, he was on TV every other day, you know. On the t- he was on the t- yeah, I'd see comics on the Tonight Show all the time. And, uh... Yeah, but he was, he, he was terrific. Uh, I, I'm just trying, I'm trying to think, like, for instance, I know the people that influenced me and into my style. Uh, Jack Parr was somebody that I, I strongly admired because of I how can he... I definitely see that, yeah. How he wore because his... He was... Uh, he wore his he, uh, heart on his sleeve. Yeah. He, w- he was very open. He was not a phony personality. You saw the real him on TV. Yeah, what, what, yeah exactly. Uh, and uh, in San Francisco, there was a disc jockey by the name of Don Sherwood. You know, and... Don't know, but I've heard of him. He was a t- uh, huge, huge in radio. Huge in radio in San Francisco. And uh, uh, there's a little bit, little bit of timing that I got over the years from watching Letterman. Um, but I think that, that, you know, what you do is you uh, then you lift from this person and you lift from that person and you lift from the other person, and what comes out is Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. What comes out is Alex Bennett. And everybody goes, oh, Alex, you're so original and whatever. No, all these other people are in me. They all came into play into what is Alex Bennett. But the reason you don't recognize it is because I made him into a pate, as it were. You know? Someone told me about you that uh, you, you, they thought you were influenced by Jack Benny. Very much. Very much. At least so far as timing is concerned. And yeah, that was it. The in, timing. In one other aspect, and I often point this out to people, I love pointing this out, that Benny wasn't a comedian. Benny was a clown. And the difference between a clown and a comedian is a comedian pulls jokes on people, a clown has jokes pulled on him. And Benny was always the butt of his jokes. He's the victim. <laughs> he was always the butt of the joke. And so, so uh, that makes a lot of sense, right? And, and mm-hmm. that influenced me. Uh, and so I always allowed myself to be the butt of the jokes. The, 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 I set up a character that everybody could malign, say things about, kid about, give a bad time to. Um, and in that, I also learned that it wasn't whether I got the laugh or not, but whether there was a laugh at all. You know, and no matter who got it, that's all that mattered. You know, so that's my influences. Yeah, but Jack Benny, very definitely. Benny was great. That was before that uh, there was rampant ageism in TV. Well, you know what he was? Well, you know what he kind of invented, I think, was the, was the broadcast comic. Uh, and I considered myself, people say, well, are you a, com- a comic? And I went, I'm a broadcast comic. You know, I, I, my stage is the radio, you know, and if I'm funny, it's because I'm just happen to be funny and I'm being a broadcast comic. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so, uh, when are you going on the Letterman show next? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, since I did it every 21 years, I, I would have been coming up in, uh, 2027. <laughs> you coming up in 2027. I see. Well, he's, he's got himself a little show on Netflix. Maybe you could get him to book you on that. 
Yeah, or the yeah, I'd like to get on comedians with cars or Seinfeld too. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, but the, well, <clears throat> you're not big enough. Yeah, you got to. Well, he's had some people I I don't know are not exactly huge on there, but but they all have kind of names, you know. Yeah, but Larry Bubbles Brown is a name to me, a name to a lot of people who enjoy your work, you know. But unfortunately, you know, uh, let's see here. Who would be a good example? Uh, you know, I know Dana Carvey did it. Well, da yeah, but Dana, Dana was Dana's established, Dana's, you know. Dana's huge. Yeah, yeah. And ha to this day has a huge following. Huge. You know it because you open for him. Yeah. By that, we don't mean he has sex with him. Yeah, uh, and he's... Uh, you feel you feel old, you know, when you Dana's kids are doing comedy now. That's wow, wow! You feel old when your kids are doing comedy and you don't have any. <laughs> so anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. It just flew by. I, I bet to, I knew that you would know that about Chaplin, even though you couldn't remember the guy's name. I'm That's trying to. I, I'll remember his name after we're through here talking. I'm sure. Anyway. Hey, listen, thank you, Bubs. Let's do it next week, okay? We will. Thanks, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderfulness that is Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. There we go. There's Larry Bubbles Brown. Oh, God, I love Larry. I love Larry. I just, I, I could have him on every day, and I would just be really happy with that. <clears throat> anyway, uh, hello, how are you? Let me turn on the phone line, see if anybody wants to call tonight. Uh, we use our Skype lines, by the way. It's GabNet Live if you want to call via Skype, okay? Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, my, my voice feels a, a bit on the rough side tonight, but I think it's okay. I don't know. I don't know. I've been having all kinds of problems. And then tomorrow i got to go to my urologist and have him give me the latest scores on the PSA tests. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm falling apart. It's, it's, it's time for me to, like, <clears throat> go into full, utter retirement. Uh, whatever. Anyway, um, uh, I'm trying to. Um, so, anyway, somebody call me. We're, we're ready to take calls. It's been four days, five days, five days? It's been since last Wednesday, since we last did a program, okay? So, mm. so give me a, a, a call. Um, here we go. Here we go. Oh, look who's here. It's uh, Vernon Nunn is the first guy up tonight. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got I got all these people calling me up, and I gotta I gotta put them give them a place on my uh, a panel here. Hold on. First we go to uh, let's see Vernon Nunn, okay, and then we go here to Bree. Uh, he looks like he's in the dark out there, and um, there we go. Okay, all right. Is that, is that okay? All right. We got. We got them, ladies and gentlemen. There they are. They're the two of them already. Hi, Bree. Hi, Vernon. How are? Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Scott Boddicker. Wow. Gotta Must be add, a Phil Free night. Uh, I, I don't think it's not supposed to be, but you know, I mean, it could very well turn out to be. At the rate we're going, he's not getting his uh, normal slot. Let's see here. No, wait a minute. We still have to. Uh, wait a minute. We didn't get. Uh, for some reason, Scott didn't come on. Well, hold on a second. Here comes Jeff Stein. All right. Let me see here. Uh, let me... Uh, and then here comes Tony Magno. Wow. Everybody's calling all at once. Everybody, hold on a second. I, I can't do this fast enough. Here comes Stein. There we go. Then we go... And then we uh, go to Phil Anybody? Meyer. Now I got to go to this, which is um, four which we will we give to, uh, let me see here, uh, to, uh, oh, wait a minute, who, who we got there? Okay, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, there, we'll, give it, we'll give that to Phil. Okay, all right, okay, wait a minute. Uh, there we go, Phil. 
And then uh, let's see here in the five slot. Is there somebody I haven't put up yet? Uh, I was calling all at once. Everybody, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Uh, Green, yeah, we got him, we got him, we got him. Oh, Tony, Tony, there we got to go with Tony. Okay, there we go. And uh, here comes Scott Boddicker again. Let's see if Scott is there. Yes, Scott is there. So I got to put him in the um, sixth spot here. Hold on a second. This will take me a moment. Scott Boddicker, okay, all right, there we go. Uh, wait a minute, and I gotta do that. And we do a transition. There we go. Wow, geez, you guys got me, you got me really working here, guys. Jeez, almighty, you gotta do work. I love me, you know, huh? What happened to Jeff? Domestic, what do you mean? What happened to Jeff? Jeff left, Jeff's there. Oh, yeah, Jeff's there. I don't, I don't know. Uh, oh, I he isn't. His picture isn't up there, but he is on screen. However, so oh, I, oh wait a minute. Be, uh, I think frozen. he. I think he. He froze up. Yeah. Oh. Uh, on the Skype feed, it said Jeff left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we go to we go. Let me see if I can go to Jeff here. Add him. Here we go. Jeff. Add him. Let's okay. see. I'm calling Jeff Stein now, and we'll see if that picks up on him. Uh, anyway, um, uh, calling Jeff Stein, calling Jeff Stein. <clears throat> Answer the phone, Jeff. Do it. Oh, no. Oh, oh, who, oh, who, who's that? What? Who's, who's the guy that you've got there with you? That's my brother-in-law, Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. Yeah. Is he, I'm in you, Iowa, Alex. I like him. Are you showing him how this works? I I'm showing how amazing you are as a as an octogenarian. I'm, not I'm, yet. I'm not yet. <laughs> to run all this stuff. He's he's amazed by it. He, my brother-in-law Mike. He's a custom knife knife maker. He's old school. He makes like all yeah. kinds of is crazy he stuff. is he an octogenarian? Almost. 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 Okay. Yeah. It says that uh, Jeff is unavailable. I don't know what happened to Jeff. Uh, now we have a really strange thing. Let's see here. That's, that's, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got. Type in Iowa is giving me a hard time, so I had to call back. Hmm? Oh, I see. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There's Jeff. Wait a minute. But no, the Jeff is frozen. Oh, yeah. So, Mike, I'm familiar with knives like Paul and, uh, you know, other other custom knives. What type of knives do you make? Uh, I make uh, folding knives, custom mm -hmm. folding knives. Uh, I was in the Knife Makers Guild in 1982, so I've been making knives for quite a few years. Yeah. Nothing like the TV show where they make the, the swords and stuff no. like that. No, not at all. A, a Damascus steel? Is that how I, you do it? I, I use Damascus steel, but I don't make it. You can stop. It. Yeah. You probably know a friend of mine, Mike, uh, Gil Hibbard. Oh, yes. I know Gil. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, he's a ham radio Back. operator also and uh, lives here not too far from me. Yo, uh, hey, some was... Ham radio has been in the news lately uh, about six, whether it's a hobby or it's a necessary thing. Well, if you lose, uh, you know, in some of these areas that are in the middle of nowhere, they have uh, emergencies and they set up ham radio nets so that they can relay information. You don't always have cell towers and the Internet. So if you have a, a major emergency, ham radio operators are, uh, relay all sorts of information that uh, you couldn't uh, without yeah, their net. Radio used to be there for emergency situations, but it's a, most of it's all automated now, so that even when there's an issue, they can't do anything about it. You know. Yeah, but if you're up in the Andes and you know uh, you, you've had an earthquake and nobody has anything, uh, that, yeah. that's the only way you can communicate. Mm. Yeah, so we'll see where that goes. I, I think, I, I, you know, if it comes across the. FCC's desk now. I think it, they're going to rule in favor of, you know, commercialism, big business. Oh, I don't know where you come up with that one. 
every single that has day. happened at times Bree, but uh it, it doesn't happen all the time and I'll, I'll give you a good example when ups was just getting started with tracking packages they petitioned the fcc for 220 megahertz and they were going to use that band for uh, digital communications between their trucks and their home offices but the technology sucked it didn't work out and they ended up going through cellular connections instead and that's what they use today okay so i mean who wants the uh, spectrum does anybody know well, one of the reasons that uh, the FCC pushed for digital television was because uh, a lot of police, fire, emergency medical services okay. needed yeah. spectrum that uh, the, the VHF, particularly uh, TV channels, took up a huge amount of spectrum. But weren't the police using 800 trunk, trunking? trunking? Uh, yeah, but you could put trunking on any frequency band. Uh -huh. Vern, I used to have a, I used to have a C band dish. I still have it on my roof. That was analog. They used to have tons of free feeds before, like, uh, say the NFL went to like a package. I used to get all the games, all the games. Uh, who, who's, ma who's making all, who's making all that noise? And who's making all that? Is, is that you, Bree? That's making all that rattling noise? Oh, that might have been. Yeah. Somebody was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Don't uh, don't don't do that. It's, it, it's kind think, of hard to hear everybody else. Yeah. What were you saying, Tony? I used to ha I, I used to have the uh, the big dish, the analog dish, mm -hmm. and the, he's right, Vernon. All the ABC, all the big affiliates. ABC was analog. NBC was the only one who went on KU band. I remember. I had to get a different feed horn. They just plopped it on, and really. But everything was up there for free, like the feeds and everything. Like the live, it was really cool for live news and sports because everything was in the clear pretty much. You just knew where to go to the transponder and you could really search for anything. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Then they took it down and went digital. I don't know what's up there now. but every, And with digital, you get more compressed. You're able to get more channels per satellite. Like, you know, I know with the analog, I had 24 channels per satellite, like T1, Telstar 1. There was 24 channels. But with digital, they were able to put them like hundreds easy. Because it was compressed, I guess. Well, it's multiplex is what it is. They just like cellular communications is all multiplexed, so that uh, it, it's time lapse to uh, you know interspersing signals. The only within. bad with digital version is if you get heavy rain, you would fade out on an analog. I never lost the picture that much in heavy rain. If you got a heavy rain with digital, you would lose the picture totally. Analog or or, or to pixelate or to pixelate. Yeah, totally yeah. wipe out. Yeah. You get that on digital TV now. If you yeah. got local channels, you can get pixelation if the signal gets weak. Yeah, Alex is just kind of laying back and letting us yak now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, why not? Um, <clears throat> I'm just taking it easy. Yeah, yeah. it's a good time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so. Um, uh, uh, Bree, why can't we see you? What? Why are you so dark? Maybe he's not even there right now. He's on mute. I, th I think he's there. Oh, yeah, he's on mute. Oh, I see. Yeah, why don't we get more light on you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> His hand. Just waved. Hey. Well, boy. He lives in you. Anyway, anyway, so. Uh, um. Uh, what? Uh, Alex, I I have this stupid fly that's been really bugging me, and I got him trapped in a closet. <laughs> so I think I got him. I think I got no, him. No, you got him trapped in a closet. <laughs> well, once, once he went in the closet, I knew I could zero in on him. Yeah, but you have to then go in the closet to kill him. <laughs> yeah, now I'm out of the I went in the closet, now I'm out of the closet. <laughs> I, I've got one of those lights that it, it's it's like a bug zapper, and you hang it up, yeah. and and the flies go into it, and then you hear it go, and you, yeah. you know it got one. I never I'm, I'm good old fashioned here, just you know, going yeah. with the fly swatter. Yeah, yeah. So Alex, uh, you got a neighbor that uh, is has got some problems, huh? What? What are you talking about? 
Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, oh man. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't think so. It's not what me. This How, guy, uh, $77 million apartment? How much? Not $77 anymore. $77 million. Hmm. Well, they want to take it. Yeah. Well, he's a billionaire. Yeah. But he's fucking crazy. <laughs> so what? He may, he, be a Trump, he may be a Trump. He may be a Trump billionaire. Maybe he just is. Well, he thinks I, he is. you know, I I happen to think he's probably a pretty nice guy. Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would. No, uh, the reason I feel that is because my president feels that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. It, it must be and right. He was quoted so as saying. So he was quoted as saying, "Terrific guy. Mm. He's got a. He's a lot of." What are you doing? Well, he's he's got a lot. He's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible. That's a man. quote from Donald Trump. Do you think yeah. Clinton's going to get wrapped up in this? Clinton? You know that uh, once. Clinton? I think the reason that Epstein got a, a sweetheart deal is because there's a whole bunch of politicians that used to party with him. Uh, that uh, may uh, go Clinton, down. Clinton didn't the party. Same Clinton didn't someone. party with him. You uh, think Clinton, Clinton says he didn't party with him, but he also says he didn't have sex with that no, no. with that girl. No, hold on a second. It, 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 Clinton old. did not party with him. Uh, Clinton accepted uh, his um, uh, donation to the Clinton to Foundation by using his jet to take him to various countries. Uh, and and that is not involving yourself in the guy's life. Oh yeah. On the other hand, on the other hand, Epstein used to stay at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. yeah. I, I heard he got out? Uh, kicked out. Yeah. Can you imagine this crew he's got? What do they say, Alex? Show me your friends. And what was that saying again? Show me your friends. Why am I feeling everything? so weak tonight? I'm just not. I'm so out of it. But anyway, uh, because I haven't done this for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, um, you got pollen? I think, I don't know. I really don't know. There's something weirdly wrong with me, but I can't figure it out. You know? And, it could be allergies. My allergies are bothering me tonight. Uh, well, I don't know. It's supposedly the pollen count isn't high, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to be affected by allergies. Okay? The grass bothers me bad. Anyway, because some days I'm fine, For other me, days. Dust, with, 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 yeah. with, well, some days I'm fine, and other days I'm not fine. So I, I can't figure it out. But anyway, um, I think uh, there's, there's a problem I've got with this whole Epstein thing. Uh, and it, 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 it's something that always bothers me when these things come up. And, and Phil was engaging in it a few moments ago. And uh, I'm sure a few of you mentally are. And that is you're automatically assigning guilt to the man. In this no, particular I am not. situation, he let, me, let me finish. Guilty in Florida. Let me no, guilty, guilty to another in. situation. To another situation, and these things, oddly enough, may not fly because the plea deal and the uh, the deal he made in Florida may apply to these incidents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what I'm saying is is that this whole idea that the man is automatically guilty of the totality. I mean, he already said, I'm not guilty. Uh, I, you know, I, I think that if he did what he's accused of, the man is a, is a horrible creep. But I'm not, going to, I'm not going to indict him until I hear the case in court or until the thing goes to court. Well, they, they said yeah, there's a statute of limitation deal. No, but, no, no, uh, no, some, no. In 2007, Phil, they Phil, changed Phil, that. Phil, Phil, you have no idea what went on then. You're, you're completely wrong on it. It was a plea agreement uh, so they could avoid federal charges. And right. uh, he made a plea and he spent time, some time in prison and he got out every day. 13 months. Yeah, 13 months. And he was registered as a sex offender uh, and all of that. All of that applied to these cases down in Florida, but the, the cases that they're now, according to his lawyers, that they're trying to apply to him were cases that were covered by that plea deal. Yeah, okay? Just, uh, so it ain't, over it, it ain't over till it's over, and when I tune in MS, MSNBC and other people like that who are just calling this guy automatically guilty, 
All right? Yeah. Uh, now, I don't want to defend him. I don't like the guy is obviously, if, if he did what he was accused of doing, even in Florida back in 2005, even in five, Florida. something like that, uh, he's a creep. He's a terrible person. And I now, do not want wait, let me finish. I don't want to sit here right. defending him. But he's not guilty yet of this. Mm -hmm. The you know. current Secretary of Labor... Uh, was the uh, prosecutor? Was he the prosecutor or the he state was, attorney general? He was, you know, he was, a, he was a U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Florida. Right now, uh, they're accusing him of uh, creating some sort of sweetheart deal. Uh, yep. He's saying that uh, you know, 14 other people signed off on this thing, and uh, this was the best we could get. And uh, but you've got uh, a ton of people now that are calling for him to resign. Well, we didn't so, we didn't hear about him back then fighting to get a a, a tougher deal for him. You know, he went well, he, along. He said, I just went along with the other 14 people. Well, I think they said that was the best they can do, uh, that these cases are hard to prove. Uh, and, what do you mean uh, they're hard, hard to prove? If he were willing to settle for 13 months incarceration, in spite of the fact that it was a very liberal incarceration, um, then they had a case against him. They could have they, so, could, they could have just gone the full Monty on it. So Schumer and and the likes of him and uh, are that are calling for uh, the resignation of the labor secretary. I forgot his name, Abbott or something. Acosta. Hmm? Acosta. Alex Acosta. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they're 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 calling for his resignation. And is this uh, you know the, the same thing like uh, like you're saying they're they're coming to uh, they they want to hang him before they uh, try him? There's no trial here. I, no, I what they're saying, they what they're saying no Acosta trial. did what, what what they're saying Acosta did was he broke the law by not letting the victims know about the sweetheart deal. And that's that was illegal. Uh, could that possibly wash out uh no, I guess he already served that would be double jeopardy. Uh, no, that that was that was on state charges. He served it, he served it, thirteen it, months it, on state charges. You would have to go back and look at the deal that was made and how that applies to these cases. According to uh, Jeffrey uh, Epstein's lawyers, these cases go all the way back to then. They're not present cases. Okay. Well, they changed they changed the law in two thousand seven when they said that. Uh, there was no statute of limitations on these types of crimes. Yes, but they and had already negotiated his plea. Yeah, they're claiming that there are new new crimes. Well, they uh, his lawyers claim these are old these are old cases. Well, that's he claims she claims. Well, yeah. well, but if he's claiming his innocence now. So it was Weinstein, but look what they do. You know, Weinstein, they Weinstein hasn't been proved guilty of anything, and as a matter of fact, just the other day, oh, Kevin, Spacey. Kevin Spacey looks like Kevin that Spacey, charge yeah. in uh, Connecticut or wherever is going to fall on false ears because it turns out now that the uh, the uh, person complaining and charging him with it uh, won't, won't testify because of uh, he won't get immunity. What's he need immunity for? Because he lied. Yeah, something with the phone. He said something with the something messages. Something with the yeah. phone or messages. Oh, is that why the thing? father took the Fifth Amendment or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it looks like Spacey is getting off. Well, huh. uh, okay, so uh, everybody's sitting no, around making jokes before. about how that guilty Spacey before, is. Like he got off. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but does that mean that they're going to start showing his movies again? No, they show those movies. No. You know, if, they, if if he gets off and uh, he, he's not convicted, uh, you know, is Spacey going to get his? Uh, no, because uh, there's no department where you go to get your name back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, sure, he could be found not guilty of everything, and they still wouldn't do it. They wouldn't show his his TV shows anymore or anything like that. Yeah, because the impression's already been made. The frame is already there. So that's everybody's just gonna think that from now on. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's how you know Trump gets away with a lot of things because of that. Because he, it, it doesn't matter what reality is. It's whatever they can push for an, one news cycle. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, Spacey was in my favorite movie, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, remember the speeches? Yeah. That always be the, closing. Yeah, always be closing. Put the coffee down. Um, Coffees for closers. Coffees for closers, yes. You don't drink the coffee. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was that was a great. Is that movie. the one with Sean Penn? No, uh, it, it was that? with um, oh. Ed uh, Ed Harris, Ed Harris uh, Alec, Spacey, Baldwin? Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Uh, what was and, the one uh, that he was in with uh, Sean Penn? Uh, I don't remember that one. No. <laughs> no, I don't remember that one. I right, gotta uh, look that up. Well, I've never seen the movie. No, it's, it's, it's a was great Pacino movie. Lemon. Oh, no, wasn't Jack Lemmon in that, too? Jack yeah. Lemmon, yeah. That's the yeah, guy who got was, told to put the yeah, coffee was, down. That was his idol. Yeah. He yeah. So, anyway, um, you know, I mean, I just think that we really, while this guy is probably, you know, hopefully, uh, not hopefully he's guilty of the stuff. It'd be nice if he wasn't, and then nobody, no women got hurt in the process. But that doesn't look like it's a possibility. But I think that we have to wait and see how it plays itself out in the courts. And we don't sit here prejudging him. We mm-hmm. want him to have the fairest of all possible trials. And, and, and then if he's guilty, throw him in the slammer for the rest of his fucking life. But right now, let's not pre-convict him. Because, ah, he's guilty. Throw him to the lions. You know, I mean, because to begin with, he's got, he, they, they got to have a jury for him, you know? So. Of his peers. Of his peers. Yeah. Is that uh, some more child molesters? Yeah. Now, yeah. See, now you're saying he's a child molester. You yeah. see That's what I'm what he saying? He was convicted no. of. He's a 290 registrant. He's, uh, you know, he has to register as a sex offender. Uh, he's, you know, that's what he, he is. is. Registered. He yeah. is registered yeah. as a sex offender. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but but previous convictions cannot apply here. Uh, no. If you're registered it, as a sex offender, a, though, it has nothing to do with convictions. Yes. Uh, is there still three strikes, uh, you know? Uh, because in baseball, yes. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, you know, in uh, in the court, you get three strikes, you go to jail for twenty five years minimum. So this might be the second strike, <laughs> or the next three third, felonies. or the next three twenty. Felonies. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, it, it look, um, it uh, it's it's really stinky, the whole all the way around. But I think everybody is is rushing to judgment a little too fast to be fair in our judicial system. And if yeah. you believe in our judicial system and that it's capable, then you allow it to play itself out rather than sit here and convict him on radio and television and everything. And everybody's just assuming guy's guilty. Yes, Jeff. What state is uh, he being attacked in? Right. New York. New York. New York. New York. It's New York. Yeah. Well, the last uh, problem that he had was in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, so... But I they're felonies. Yes, that those Early burly. are substantially different. And the fact that even if they're the same... They're just saying what they're saying is that the, the, the cases that were in play when he made his plea bargain were yeah. these exact things that were in play and that the lawyers they were surprised that all of a sudden the government's decided to suddenly prosecute them i mean some of them may be so old that there's a statute of limitations you know well that, that's what i was saying in 2007 yeah but you can't even though these crimes yes, but you can't took you place. can't i don't think you can do that retroactively phil i think if you were tried and the and these things weren't uh, weren't tried at the time that you know you can't retroactively say that there's no statute that's, of limitation. That's what I. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that at uh, if these crimes took place <clears throat> after 2007, uh, which is what I believe the New York uh, uh, courts are alleging, uh, that uh, then there's no statute of limitations. If it happened prior to then there is a statute, statute of limitations. Mm-hmm. I think so it these depends are, on the jurisdiction, too, Phil. Yeah. But if these yeah. crimes... They're, they're, I, I think that they're talking about new or different crimes, or they, they got other crimes that came up. It took place in New up. York. Right. Yeah. 
So uh, those may not be, may or may not be uh, limited by the statute of limitations if they took place before or after. Stick around. This guy's got a lot of lawyers, got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he has the wherewithal to fight this thing. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to see what happens. Yeah. You know? Um, well, maybe he'll run for president like Tom Steyer. Yeah, well, his... What was oh, what when I saw that his lawyers were also Trump's lawyers as well? Uh, that, that's, yeah. Trump's probably got every lawyer. Well, uh, Trump is, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, you know... Uh, we need, uh, it's been uh, Trump, of the course... The guy's name was David Boyce. Uh, was he... Was he Epstein's lawyer, or is he the lawyer for the uh, the uh, for the woman that uh, is alleging? Uh, David Boyce, I think, was also David uh, Boyce was a, involved a lawyer in, in, during the uh, uh, the hanging Chad thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump v. Gore. Yeah, yeah, right. I remember David Boyce, but I don't remember who he represented. And well, who's he defend? Uh, is he defending Epstein? He's uh, he's involved with this Epstein thing. I don't know. If he's defending Epstein, or if he's defending uh, uh, or uh, representing one of the women that had come forward, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it was a there. It, it, it's it's a very stinky mess, and it's a horrible thing. And uh, uh, I, I I don't understand. See, here's what I don't understand: you get convicted in what? Oh, I didn't turn on my on the air sign. Um, uh, uh, we haven't been on the air. Um, <laughs> Does my voice sound hoarse tonight? No. Yeah. Huh? A little bit. A little raw. A little raw? Hmm. Okay. Well, it's probably cancer then. Anyway, um, I'm going to the uh, my urologist tomorrow, so that's that's got me too. Anyway, where were where were we? Um, you were supposed to get some sort of medical thing uh, yesterday. What? Yeah, I got Didn't the you blood test yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, no is, results? Uh, no, I'm not going to get the results till tomorrow when I see my doctor. Um, anyway, uh, so, uh, I, you know, all, all I'm saying is that we really have to, we have to sit and wait on this thing and not go rushing to judgment. And yeah. all these people are like, oh, Epstein's guilty. You know, oh, look, they got him. Here's the thing I don't get about Epstein. Okay. You're pretty wealthy. You're obviously no dummy. All right? You get convicted in 2005. You spend 13 months in jail on a very liberal release plan where six days a week he got to go to his office for 12 hours a day, you know? And then he went back to a country club cell. Uh, it, it was, you know, but nevertheless, and then he, he, of course, has to register as a sex offender. Um, so, and it wasn't really even sex offender. It was something else. And I'm trying yeah, to remember uh, that's what, what he is. What, no, no, he was not registered as a sex offender. It was something else. And it was a math, ma it was a matter of language that his lawyers hammered out where it wouldn't be called sex offender. Okay. Anyway, but I'd have to go look it up and I don't have time right now. I'll and look it up. anyway, the point is yeah. that you you found guilty of this, so they got you. You know, you know, you shouldn't be sticking your pinky in uh, in 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 teenage taint. You know, uh, <laughs> and and um, you know this. You're not a dumb guy, and you keep doing this, even though you spent time in jail. You, you know, <laughs> what, what, what what's if, if, in fact, this guy is did all insane? these things after that date, is he, he's nuts. I mean, come on. So he, what? You, she's, she's 16, and you can't wait till she becomes 18? I think the only way you can stop these guys is through chemical castration. You know? Oh, Jesus. Uh, they, they, they don't <laughs> learn. You can't rehabilitate these people. I, mean, I don't understand it, you know. He's a, a, a Jeffrey Edward uh, Epstein, born January 20th, 1953, is an American financier and registered sex offender. I don't think the term used was offender. I think wherever you're reading it from is wrong. It's wrong. 
Uh, I did a Google news. search. It's Didn't wrong. Yes, yes but oh, it's this is wrong wrong Wikipedia. Right. Yeah, but it's it's oh, it, Wikipedia. it's wrong. It's, it, there was a there was a there was a nuance of terms involved in what they said he had to register as, yeah, and it wasn't about a million terms. It, it was maybe two million. It, yeah, sex. It wasn't sex offender. Uh, Whoever wrote the Wikipedia thing. No, that's what he's being accused of now. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to have a bad day. But see, I don't, I don't like how it, I'm discomforted by when the when the media gets in, you know, the prosecutors that are, have a big chart with his name on it, U.S. versus Jeff uh, Epstein or whatever, and the, and all these details. It's like, why do you have to? It's like show business, you know. It's like if you've got a case. And you can move forward. Go ahead. Yeah. You don't need to go on CNN with your charts and graphs and pl and plot things out. I I just think that's wrong. Well, you know, in other countries, it, they don't do it exactly that way. Uh, for instance, in England, if if he were accused in England, the prosecutors would say, "Today we arrested Jeffrey Epstein, and we are charging him with blah blah blah." And at that point, the prosecution shuts up. They don't go on television. They don't say have any more to say about it, uh, and and that is the law in England. You can't you can't try a case in the press, yeah. and we 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 used to have that law. I mean, when I first worked in New York City, I had to sit down with our lawyers who told me what I could do and what I couldn't do. And one of the things was they said, you are not permitted by the city of New York to try a case in the press, okay? And so you have to avoid doing anything that would try a case in the press. And so I, and I thought that was fine. You know, that to me made a lot of sense. And, and so in those days, we were very good about that. We didn't try these things in the press, but we do now. And that's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. You had your uh, hand up. So. Is Vox a uh, right or left wing uh, source? I have VOX? no idea. I never heard of it. All right. How about New York Magazine? Yeah, New York Magazine, yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, convicted <coughs> sex offender Jeremy Epstein was no, arrested. But, but, but for... you see, see, all I'm saying is that may be the assumed term. There was a, I heard this on the news today from a lawyer who said that legally down there, in fact, Epstein was saying that he wasn't a registered sex offender. He was registered as a sex something. Miami Herald. Uh, it seems as though Jeffrey Epstein avoided a lifetime sentence for underage human something to register as a sex offender and pay restitution. But, so, uh, but that, that's a little... So he did register as a sex no, offender. No, that he didn't. But he didn't, Phil. That's what I'm saying. That's what this lawyer was saying, that it was a it was a nuanced term that they used in the court. But then the newspapers turned that into registered sex offender because that's a term they're used to using. How about the uh, uh, state of Florida? Uh, uh, I don't uh, give a shit, Phil. I'm telling you, this is what I heard today. I don't give well, a you shit. heard wrong. I don't give a shit about Fox or, you know, New York Magazine. They may have it all wrong that he was not, it was not as a sex offender. It's some other term. Uh huh. Oh, what is all it? right. Megan, yeah, you stick to it. Well, they, it's, it's used <laughs> a, a lot. It's used a lot on a lot of websites. They say registered uh, sex, sex offender. offender. Yeah, but what I heard today was that was not the term that was used in the bargain. Where did you, where did you hear that? Uh, offenders .r, uh, .r, uh, No, R I, in fact, I think I may have even seen it on Fox. There was some lawyer they had on who was talking about the case and saying that Epstein used to like to say to people, no, I'm not a, a registered sex offender. I'm a registered something or another, but it wasn't no, sex it, offender. It, it's Alex, Republican. Uh, according to Snopes.com, mm -hmm. he was required to register as a sex offender really mm -hmm. i trust snopes yeah. you know they usually got it right well more than i trust phil you know <laughs> well i don't trust snopes <laughs> yeah because it usually proves you wrong but uh, i don't know i just some I, left wing commie i just know. heard that they, that 
it what the term wasn't sex offender at least he felt comfortable with the term as it was created in this case I, you know uh, but we have to go back to that plea deal to look at it carefully and yeah. uh, you know somebody says he has to register as a sex whatever and then somebody immediately says sex offender that's what normally you say you know well uh, I used to register people as sex offenders in the city of Richmond, and uh, they had to fill out certain forms. I had to, they had to declare where they were living. Uh, they had to uh, get their picture taken, and I would update the uh, the registry. Uh, uh, and uh, do we do that's we what do I, we believe in this registering of sex offenders? Well, it's called Megan's Law. No, well, wait, it's uh, PC 290. Yeah, I'm saying fuck Megan's Law. Is, is it right? Uh, yeah, don't you want to know if you're living next door to a sex offender no. and you got kids? And Not particularly. Yeah, Not particularly. Jeffrey Epstein was once given three 12-year-old girls from France as a birthday gift, the documents allege. Hmm. Well, happy birthday. Uh -huh. Did he share them with Clinton? I don't even know why anybody would want sex with a 12-year-old. That one I don't understand. I mean, I wouldn't have understood that if I was 12 myself, you know. I mean, I just don't understand it. I mean, uh... uh yeah. Liz Nambla, you know, that's for man-boy love, you know. You know, it's, it's probably some chemical imbalance. No, but I don't understand why anybody would want a 12-year-old. You know? That's because you're no normal. Well, no, I just, oh, I, you know, come on. I mean, it's not that you suddenly know how to have sex when you're 18, but at least you're a little more mature. But, I mean, you know, I'd, it, it just You're never, old enough to make a choice. It never made know? sense to me that somebody would, would want yeah, that. It's just sick. You know. Now, how old do you have to be to get married in, uh, not Bahrain, uh, where, where are you living, uh, UAE? Uh, 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 how, do they allow uh, uh, child brides there uh, in um, Dubai, ba sure. Bahrain, the, Dubai, Dubai, the, Dubai? Uh, I don't know the law. The law. Like that. I don't. I don't think there's. The, I think you're you're thinking of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, maybe. Kentucky. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> There's one one episode we were watching the you know we're watching the West Wings and there was a West Wing where the president has this guy from Saudi Arabia in his office and this woman who's with him and he says and uh, I'm I'm so happy to have you here and especially your daughter as well he says it's not my daughter it's my wife Ooh. you know yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and but I mean I just don't I I don't understand it it's a, and I don't understand how you get caught. And now you get caught again. I mean, why do you continue with the same behavior? You, I mean, yes, I know there's a certain obsessiveness, but there's also, if you, if you spent 13 months kind of not having your liberty, and you were found guilty, and you were registered as a sex offender, don't you say to yourself, you know, I can just bring things up a notch and get them to be 18, and I won't get in trouble. Don't you think some people feel they're uh, entitled or above the law and that they can... Uh, you know, they can get away with uh, things that other people can't, uh, maybe because of his money. Well, you've been quiet, Scott. What do you think about all of this? And this is from a Trump supporter? Well, yeah. You know, I mean, Trump goes for those younger ones. Look at Melania. And, uh, you know, but, you know, at least he's going for legal age. Uh, oh. He's got great taste. And, and he loves his daughter. Yeah, <laughs> he's got good taste there too. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I well, I, I in a way I think I think Melania is kind of cheesy. If you want my opinion. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I think she's cheesy. I don't think she's sexy Did you at see all. The huh? Uh, it's just because she's got an accent. What did you Did say? you see the photos in the mall? I didn't see any of the mall photos when she was supposed to be in a wet T-shirt. I I heard him talking about it, but I never saw the photos. No, uh, no. Why uh, a fake T-shirt, uh, wet T-shirt, uh, uh, co covering her fake boobs? You know, I mean, you're not seeing anything. You're just seeing f plastic. No, we normally pay for that. But on a first lady, come on. Look, hey, it's she got the position. 
Uh, she was I'm married just, to the right. Well, guy. it's like my it's like my father said. One, there was a there was a quote when Eisenhower. Or wait, excuse me. When yeah, when Eisenhower was running for his uh, 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 or, or running for president, uh, so there were some signs that read "Put Mamie in the White House." And my father's attitude was, "I ain't voting for fucking Mamie." You know, I'm I'm yeah. voting for president of the United States, and she's not running. What what is that noise? Oh, oh. that might have been burning. Now just remember, yeah. people, when you're going to do stuff like that, sorry, uh, mute. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, Vernon. You can get away with anything, Vernon. I nope. like you. Uh, nope. Anyway, what? Maybe, maybe in that White House. <laughs> I like you too. Is that what you just said? I think he said, "Fuck you." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The American League Definitely. has defeated the National League four to three. What? Is there still an American League? Yeah, they won the All Star game. How about the soccer team, huh? How about those babies? Yeah. They huh? get a ticket tape tomorrow. Yeah, well, they're getting good. a big parade in New York City, and they ain't going anywhere near the White House. <laughs> nobody wants nothing. Not Actually, a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of sports people will not go to the White House right now. A lot of football teams won't go. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about uh, uh, there was a possibility that they were going to trample the American flag when uh, uh, it was on the ground and uh, yeah. Megan Rapoport or something? It looked like she was going to uh, step on it, and uh, one of the other players grabbed it and and held it up so that that couldn't happen. Well, was that your interpretation? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't think she had any intention of stomping on the American flag. It was down on the ground. Yeah. How to Good get on the ground? Stop. How to get on the ground? Um, not sure. Did she throw it down there, or did somebody drop it? I don't know, but somebody was wise enough story. to pick it up, and it's you know ridiculous story. But they don't want to go to the White House. They they said fuck you. You know. I don't think Trump wants them there. No, he wanted them there, and they said, "We're no way we're going to the White House." Well, was, and then he said, "Well, I, I'm rescinding the uh, the, uh, the invite." Oh, big deal! Yeah. You know. Oh, she's not his type anyway. There are people. There are people that constantly would give their eye teeth to go to under normal conditions to the White House. I would I have. I'm. I'm. I, you know. I'm. I'm real mad because. Nicole Boxer got married in the White House, and I knew Nicole, and she never invited me to her fucking wedding. Who's Nicole Boxer? Barbara Boxer's daughter. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. And and um, uh, I, I, the one thing I would have always loved to have done is go to the White House. But if I were invited by Trump, I wouldn't go, and a lot of people feel the same way, you know? Because they, go, they kind you know of, I go, yeah, and steal the sheets. <laughs> you go to steal the sheets. I see. Yeah. yeah. Hey, where's my <laughs> invites? <laughs> my, I got sheets. They fit. Yeah, that's the new that's the new Nazi symbol. That cap. Anyway, um, you know. So I I don't know. I just um um, um you know I I'm so happy that they won the uh, this is their fourth. Uh, Second in a row, fourth overall. Fourth, fourth in a row. No, no. Second in a row. Yeah. Fourth overall, I believe. Four overall. Okay. Yes. yes. So we're 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 kicking ass in the world in soccer, which never was an American sport. You know. Taking now the too, and at at a third the pay. Mm -hmm. Jeff had his finger. And yes. And the and the girl who was uh, on TV today, uh, she has been there three times. Yeah, yeah. She only won twice. Yeah. Now, the, the female soccer team is saying that they're not getting equal pay to the men's uh, soccer Nowhere team. Nowhere near Correct. it, and they're, they're drawing bigger crowds. But uh, somebody said that the amount of money that the men's team draws is much greater no, than... No, they, what they said that... In, in these, these world soccer championships, they have drawn more people than the men do. Sorry, Phil. It's always going to be sorry. <laughs> no, they should, they should get the same money men do. There's no question Why? about it. Why not? They should get more because they win. 
Yes. Well, our guys don't win. Yes. Well, uh, yes, Jeff. 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 The other reason is because they have a legal agreement with the guys who run this whole thing. And FIFA? there's a, they're both at a, as a legal uh, complaint right now. Is that FIFA? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the Very corrupt FIFA. organization. Very corrupt. Uh, yeah, well, a couple of years ago, weren't they uh, getting payoffs for where they were going to hold the uh, uh, the soccer matches? They still and, do. Uh, yeah. They still do. Um, they're a terrible organization, you know. <laughs> um, it, it's a shame that such a important sport in our world is being, is, is literally controlled by a corrupt organization. Um we would the never, DNC? Hmm? The oh. DNC? Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> White House. Hmm? Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it... it um, oh, by the way, uh, this guy, uh, who's the guy, the, uh, the... Was the district... Who was the attorney down there who... Uh, uh, not Abbott. What, uh, what's his name? Acosta? Acosta. Uh, Alex Acosta. The, the president today said when they asked him about Acosta, well, he's been very good at being the head of the Labor Department and because look at our labor statistics. What else did he say well, about Wait a minute, Acosta? wait a minute. But here's where he's wrong. The head of the Labor, the labor Department has nothing to do with influencing the statistics <laughs> of labor. Uh, uh, they have nothing to do with it. Uh, what else did he say oh, about Acosta? Oh, he said, oh, he, he's doing a great job, you know. And then, then when it came to, very strange, Epstein. You, to Epstein, he said, he's well, doing a heck of a job, I, Brownie. I, I haven't talked to him in 15 years, and we had a falling out. That okay. was Epstein, but yeah. what Trump said about yeah. Acosta Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, was, can I finish what I'm saying, Phil? Uh, I asked so it's yes. No, so, no. So he said uh, that... Uh, you know, he the Labor Department. Uh, look at look at the statistics for labor. Has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing to do with it. And then he said, "Oh, he said about uh, Epstein. He said I never uh, I, I had a falling out with a guy about 15 years ago, and I haven't talked to him since. I'm not a fan. Uh, what do you, What does that I, mean? I, you're not a fan. What?" You you join Maybe the he's an air conditioner. You, you join the, you, you join the Epstein uh, fan club. Is that what you yeah. do? I mean, or, or I'm no, not a fan. My, my question was about uh, these people that are coming uh, to the forefront and saying that Acosta should resign. Mm -hmm. And what Trump said about Acosta is he was doing a good job in his present position. No, but he and, justified him doing a good job by saying, "Look at no, the labor you, you statistics." No, look at the labor statistics, and that has no. nothing to do with he, what the Department of Labor does, because well, Trump doesn't even know off, what the Department of Labor does. And I'm not cutting you, you off, Phil, off. any more than you cut me off. Oh, uh, tit for tat, huh? Yeah, you uh, want okay, your tat so, back. Yeah, I want it back. So anyway, what he said was, uh, you know, we're going to do a full investigation on this, and, uh, you know, he's not going to rush to judgment on, Alco on Acosta, uh, and and I would think that you would feel the same way, but Schumer and and a number of other senators, even some did, Republicans, did I, did I say are, I, did I say I want him to re resign? Did I even mention that on the show tonight? Uh, this is did I mention on judgment. this show tonight that he should resign? Did I say it at any point no, on this show? No, you didn't say that. Then shut up, Phil, because I'm not accusing him of anything. Are a fucking idiot sometimes. What, I'm not, uh, what do you mean I'm a fucking <laughs> idiot? I, I'm making a point that uh, Trump also said about Acosta that before he, you know, these people are asking him to resign, and before he does that, he wants to, an investigation to find out, and then he'll make his judgment. So, you know, I'm just making the point that uh, not, Trump did say, uh, hey, we'll look into this. You know, and you're taking out of context these other things about uh, the labor statistics. No, but what you're I'm not, saying not is, is he was he was wrong to say 
that the Labor Department has anything to do with those labor statistics. They are there as an administrative organization, not as somebody who encourages labor, uh, you know, uh, people when, being hired, as an example. Well, when you, when you have a Department of Labor and this guy's in charge of it, they negotiate a lot of things. No, but they don't. Ne no, they do not. They do not. They just are in charge of administering labor. Mm -hmm. Labor it's, laws. Labor laws. Yeah. And, and it's those labor laws that allow for Phil, more employment. Phil, it has nothing to do with the labor statistics. Okay. Nothing. Am I right, Scott? I have no idea what the Labor Department does. The, neither, do, neither do they, no. obviously. I have no idea. So why do we have one? Yeah. Well, why do we have a, why do we have a presidency? I'm beginning to ask that question. <laughs> we don't. Uh, we don't. We, Alex, we don't. You know, we we we've been watching the uh, we've been watching the the West Wing, and um, here's a president. He gets into this problem, and he has that problem, and there's some foreign problem, and there's some problem with this and that. And Marjorie looks at me and goes, "I can't imagine Donald Trump having to make any of these decisions." <laughs> Hey, Alex, Alex yeah, my wife and I, we started TV. watching The West Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, before you you and uh, Marjorie even did again, we watched it the first time. But what season are you on now? I don't even know where we're at. We just finished at. season three. Season three, and that's about where we're at now. It's, it's awesome. I love uh, it. I'm probably giving up. If she wants to watch season four, I'll maybe watch some of it. But that's when Sorkin started falling apart. Oh, and really? and and he just by the end of that season, NBC asked him to leave. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Getting a little burnt. Here comes yeah. Phil. The, the, the Department of Labor fosters and promotes the welfare of job seekers, wage earners, and retirees, that's you, Alex, of the United States by improving working conditions, advancing mm -hmm. their opportunities for mm -hmm. profitable employment, protecting their retirement and health care benefits, and helping yes. employees. But what does that have that has, not, that has nothing to do with the labor statistics? Well, if they find no, uh, no, if they Phil, find more Phil, people Phil, to work, Phil, Phil, then the Phil, unemployment goes down. Phil, and the Phil, labor Phil, it has better. nothing to do with 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 jo job uh, uh, yeah. jobs going up or jobs going down. It only administers the welfare of the people who do have jobs. They promote. They promote, uh, but they yeah. don't. They promote. They don't create uh, jobs, jobs, Phil. They don't create jobs. Not yeah, according to this. Well, it yeah. doesn't. Where does it say their their job is to create jobs? Does it say anything there? It says it fosters and promotes the welfare of job seekers, yeah. wage no, earners, no, and that, retirees. No, no, improving that, their working conditions and advancing is not, opportunities. That is not. And advancing opportunities for profitable employment. It's that still, creates jobs. But the jobs have to be there, and they have to exist, in order for the job situation to go up. Okay. There's plenty of jobs. That it the, the <laughs> I'm telling you, the Labor Department has nothing to do with the job statistics. Uh, you're you're splitting hairs. No, I'm not splitting hairs, Phil. You're saying I'm splitting hairs because you want to be right, and you're not right. I'm always right. What what are you what are you saying, Scott? What are you pointing well, out to your brother? I'm, I'm sorry, I was talking to my brother-in-law. <laughs> brother I said Phil. He thought he was muting. I, 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 I said Phil should split a few more hairs and he would not be so bald. <laughs> I got it colored. You, you colored it? Yeah, they put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, you know, uh, in, in the hair. So it's not just white. Can you turn around so we can see it? <laughs> it's real. Hmm. Oh, nice. It looks, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. good. Yeah, so instead of being white, it's got some... It's got some color to it. Is that, by Pepper. the way, Phil, is somebody in your house like using Netflix or something like that? Why is my... Uh, it, it, uh, you're kind of like a little shaky. Pixelated? Not pixelated. You just It just kind of freeze it a little bit in your movement. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed that. You know, uh, let me switch yeah, to this sure. network here. Mm. You, oh, well. you did it again. Hey, Phil, when you look up something, look up what the Bureau of Labor Statistics and what department it's under. All right, that's better. There you go. That's much better. Uh, maybe. 
I, yeah, I don't know. That's the five G, and the other one was just the regular. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, it's a little better. Yeah, I guess. Well, you know, it's it's uh, it's. Like, uh, well, no, you're frozen again. Yeah. Let me uh, let me reboot. Uh, uh -huh. I'll be back. Okay, he'll be back. Okay. He will. I'll be back. Call us back. He'll be back. Yeah. I will. Um, let's, uh, um, um, so, you know, um, you know, again, these little fights with him, he's got to prove himself right. And so he, he finds this one little thing that may have been said somewhere that justifies <laughs> blah, 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 and he's, he's wrong. Well, he's confusing the Labor Department with the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And yes. They're different departments. Exactly. Very good. <clears throat> Very good. You made, your, you made the point better than I did. But all I'm saying is that I heard today that, you know, he was wrong in assuming that the Labor Department was responsible for the labor statistics, which they clearly are not. So, anyway. Um, so what else has been happening in the news? Anything? Got him. Um, well, did you talk about Trump's uh, uh, his speech on the 4th? Because you were off. It's been oh, a while. But. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You mean that big, huge crowd he had? I, I didn't see it. I, I, they didn't show it. So I, don't I know thought the, the picture of him in front of a glass shield that was spattered with rain said it all. Was that rain or was that spit? Yes, <laughs> 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was. It was maybe, could have very easily been spit, you know. Yeah. I wish Phil would have heard that joke. I just made it up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The only president that has to uh, 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 has to give a speech in front of a uh, in front of a, uh, a, spit, a spit shield. Yeah, or a, uh, yeah, what are those I, things they have at uh, at uh, salad bars? Been hit. <laughs> yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Can you imagine a newscast? The president's been hit with spit. <laughs> You're like an assassination. Yeah. Don't get the gun. Just spit at him. <laughs> he, he's amazing. He is just amazing. But amazing. so, so we watch. You know, you probably watch the West Wing and say the same thing. I can't imagine Trump having to deal with any of this shit. Oh my yes, uh, yes, uh, Jeffrey. Oh, turn on your microphone. What? Did everybody hear that? Uh, the guy from uh, England said that Trump was pretty much an asshole, and uh, well, he, he's, he's the ambassador. We can't trust him. And he's the ambassador to the United States. Yeah, he's not trustworthy. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah. Imbecile. I don't yeah. think he said imbecile, did he? Yes, imbecile. Because it it kind of remind me. He said imbecile because I thought, did he say impeach? Impeach? You know, impeachment? Im imbecile? Yeah, I didn't know, but. Yeah. Imbecile, I believe. What I... Anyway, it's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, and but but as Trump said, we are he's well respected around the world. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here uh, the British ambassador to the United States Church of Picture PTP by the British ambassador now targets Vietnam. Trump's ire as wired. Um let's see oh. here. Uh, I think he said where where is it? What, what did he say? I'm trying to look at what he said. Just oh, leave Phil off for now. Hmm? <laughs> Answer the question before Phil comes on. No, oh, <laughs> Phil. It says missed call from Phil. Oh. <coughs> hmm. Oh, there he is. Okay, here we go. There we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, he's back with us. There we go. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find the quote, if there's a quote around here. Uh, they privately dissed the Trump's team as dysfunctional and inept. And, um, inept. Yeah. Who says that? Uh, the uh, the uh, ambassador to the United States from England. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. England, the ones that want to get out of Brexit and uh, can't seem to find a way to do it. But yeah. Well, you know. no, they made the same stupid mistake we made by electing Trump. Okay. Well, so just because they're as Johnson, they're just as stupid as we are. Oh, Boris now, Johnson. Boris is coming. Well, oh, there's an idiot. There's a fucking moron. There ever was <laughs> one. Boris. Boris, absolutely. 
at least he sounds Russian. <laughs> yeah. Natasha, yeah. his wife. Not yeah. Natasha, his wife, yeah. And Moose. Moose is cool. Boris the squirrel, right? Boris is Johnson. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you're much smoother now, <laughs> Phil. Oh, good. Mm. No, it's not good, actually. But, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so, my voice doesn't sound that hoarse, though, does it? No, it's, it's you sound yeah. fine. Oh, Alex. okay. <laughs> no, I, I just you know I think it I think it it's got to be pollen, you know. Uh, it, it, there's something. I think either that or there's something in this apartment that's causing it. It's the lead. Are it right could be. <laughs> you know, a hundred. What's your apartment? One hundred and four years. One hundred and ten years old. What do you mean? Uh, one hundred and nineteen years old. Okay, so when they painted one hundred and nineteen years ago, they used lead, and you know, uh, I, I don't think that's the kind of building that you had a bunch of kids eating the lead off the windowsills and stuff, you know. So it's still there. Hmm. Yeah. hmm. And uh, you know what lead does is it affects your brain and uh, your cognitive ability. Well, and, I, I, well, I took uh, that pi those pill that pill the other day for about lead four, five five days. And I felt terrific. I yeah. really felt great. And then I stopped taking them because it was time to stop taking them. And uh, all of a sudden, my symptoms came back. Uh. Not as badly. Not in the same yeah. way. But I'm tired. Mm -hmm. and, I don't know. And, I, I, and I went and worked out today. I didn't run out of breath or anything like that, you know. Yeah, twenty five so, minutes. On so the, you were in remission for twenty five minutes while you worked out. No, when I work out, I don't have any. You know, I don't get short of breath. I don't get dizzy or anything like that. You know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I just don't understand what it is that is wrong with me. It could be abject depression, is what it could be. Well, I, I think that there are uh, p rotting bodies in the walls of your apartment. Uh, you know, over the years, there was a couple of serial murderers, and they stuffed them well, in the well, walls. I'm sure, you know, it's always a and, possibility. And, and now you're being affected by it. You know, yeah, yeah. That in the lead. Well, I'll tell you what's happening. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, Damien, next week, starting yeah. next week, is taking three weeks off to go on vacation. I thought his life Ooh. was a vacation. Yeah, I, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the same thing this year sometime. Yeah, take, take do two, it. You should three weeks yeah. off. You'll all be here when I come back. So you know, uh, uh, hopefully, as long as we're still alive. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think I think you should. You know, it, 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 you're not getting younger, and uh, you should enjoy life. Gee, this is I your am, but I am getting younger, Phil. I don't know why it's happening, but I'm a regular Benjamin Button. <laughs> you got the Midas touch in reverse. Yeah. Can, can you move Jack's show up to Damien's spot? Because it's hard to stay up that late around here. Yeah. Damien, Damien has to be off at a certain hour, otherwise his girlfriend will uh, deal with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He he need, he. Uh, I think uh, what is it? It's like six thirty in the evening here when he's on, and. Uh, that's yeah. the perfect time for him to continue with his life. And, uh, well, I would like to it, listen it, to it, Jack more often. Well, I, you know, I mean, when I go if I go away for a couple of weeks, Jack can do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And there's nothing going on after, so he can do that and uh, doesn't have to worry about doing his. Yeah. Right. Right. So you know, Jack. Jack's a pro. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so. <clears throat> <clears throat> See? Just your choke. Hmm? Anyway. Just uh, your choke. Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, so, you challenge. know, this, this Jeffrey Epstein thing has, has really been, oh, you know what we've got is we've got another Democrat in the race now. This mm -hmm. guy Styers uh, from Steyer, California. Yeah. From California. You know about Tom this Steyer? guy? Yeah. 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 But uh, uh, what's his name? Swalwell is out. He's out. He's yeah. out. Well, you know what it is? I honestly believe that every time somebody gains weight on this planet, somebody loses weight. It's all because we have to balance <laughs> things out. And the same thing is true of the Democratic uh, uh, Party. When some guy leaves, some guy has to join. But Stiers has, uh, Stiers has uh, uh, he's got money. He's got a lot of money. He's already pledged $100 million to his campaign. 
Whoa. But his only deal is impeach Trump. That's 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 his platform. Well, no, that's one of his for parts me. of his platform. Works for me. It works uh, for yeah, me. He's, he's he's saying, oh, I don't like big business. Well, how do you make his money? Well, don't you, know. you know something? He's he can make small he, business. He, uh, as a matter of fact, no, I don't think so. He made his his money very ethically, and has taken most of his money and put it into good works. What was it? A hedge fund or? Uh... I don't know what he did. But he he I'm absolutely look. yeah I'm the look <laughs> no he absolutely How puts, did Tom puts his, make his puts uh, puts fortune. hundreds of millions of dollars every year into good works I think he's put almost a billion dollars in to good works I mean Ooh, he he's so a, did Jeffrey Epstein. he's a guy who even though he no Jeffrey Epstein he's a philanthropist they says. say but they can't name anything he's been philanthropical <laughs> about. Uh, young women's uh, uh, Christian. See, there you go. There you go, Phil. There you go. <laughs> Automatically guilty. Make the little girl yeah. jokes. You yeah. know. Well, <laughs> you know. Um, what are you telling me? It's too soon. <laughs> it, it, it way too soon. The guy was just indicted yesterday. <laughs> He's sitting in the court. <laughs> All right. So uh, it looks like uh, Friday be punching plates. Huh? Looks Friday like Scott may have. Scott, did you get a, a Tom Steyer? Yeah. Steyer was a hedge fund guy. He's 62, and uh, he's not that rich. He's only got 1.6 billion. Really? <laughs> but he's, he's but, just Trump, obviously. But, but he's, that's half a Trump. He says. <laughs> so no, he says. No, it, that's that's more than half a Trump. It's like two times <laughs> Trump. Trump. You know, the Forbes magazine is saying that uh, Jeffrey Epstein may not be a billionaire. Uh, what? Yeah, that he may be lying. Uh, well, how about how about Trump? He may be lying too, according to no, Forbes. No. Company. <laughs> two poor guys. Two poor well, guys. Trump, how can you lose as much I, money as Trump lost, <laughs> and and still be a billionaire? Uh, it, it, you get the discount in volume. No, what he what he did is he's he, there, there, there's a he doesn't why doesn't he want us to see his tax return? No. I'm Why? Why, Phil? Because he has something to hide. If nah. you didn't, if if you were proud and you were you you were saying I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, wouldn't you be willing to prove it? His tax return oh, isn't going to tell you whether he's a billionaire or not. It's going to tell you what he made for that tax, or year. how much he lost, or well, whether lost. or people could yeah. sit around and suddenly realize that he's lying on his tax return. Well, you know, I saw a thing that said what his properties were worth and how much they were encumbered by mortgages, and he's sitting pretty good. I don't think we're going to have to throw any dinners for him to, you know, raise money so that he can get his next meal. Hey, you know, he he filled in the food what he owes to the Russians? Well, the, the yep. Russians just buy his property. Why, if he had so much money, was he out trying to get money from people? Yeah. What money was he trying to get from people? Well, you mean well, uh, making deals the, with uh, the Deutsche the, Bank thing? The, the, and uh, the Russians and, and banks in America wouldn't lend him money any longer? I, I mean, thought, if the guy is a multi-billionaire, wouldn't they be happy to loan him money? I thought the idea behind business was to get money from other people for the stuff that But you if do. they won't give it to you, there's a reason. Well, Deutsche Bank gave it to him, you know. And Deutsche Bank never saw it back. Well... They're philanthropists. Yeah. You know, all I'm saying is, Phil, Money. your boy ain't you know, anywhere close to a billionaire. In fact, he may be, he may be make in, in the, he's in the best position he's ever been in right now being president because he's, he's literally. Bulletproof. Bulletproof. Well, he, he, what, know, is he getting but, three hots in a cot? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah after, basically. After he gets out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think he'll he'll be reelected an another couple of times. Another couple of times. Right. Right. Imagine if he wins again, they'll go crazy out there in the streets. If he wins again, they'll go nuts. He will win again if you keep putting up these left wing socialists like Bernie Sanders and <coughs> and uh, you know the, the whole party is moving left. You Joe keep putting Biden. those guys up, it's going to be another debacle like you saw in 72, I think, with uh, 
uh, McGovern. By the way, I've just noticed Bree has been frozen for a long time. He hasn't been online for a while, has it's he? It's 150 degrees where he's from. How can he be frozen? <laughs> where, where is he, Bree? What happened to you? Uh, he's not on Skype. He's, he's not on Skype. I just noticed because see, I can't I can't tell here because I basically look at my screen for the show, and yeah. he's still there because he's frozen. You know, I could. Did, did he move yet? What? Bree? Did, did he move yet? Any day, I think. Yeah. Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I would think that if he was in the midst of moving, that. Uh, you know, when he does move, that he's not going to call in. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. Although I did call in on a flight. I, I don't remember where I was coming from, but I, I had, uh, yeah, uh, at least I talked to Alex for a few minutes, and then I couldn't get back on the Internet that was on the plane. Let me see here. Um, uh, Scott, let me move Scott into that spot. I'm just, oh, I'm, 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 I'm just. Uh, uh, oh, no, you're not moving Scott. No, I'm, it's not. I'm just moving him to a better place. That's all. There oh. we go. Okay. Scott's Scott, going to a better there, place. There we go. We just moved him up there. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. If I had a fill, that's all I want to know. You're, 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 you're actually, you're in the second slot. Phil's in the fourth. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm like Charles Atlas. I'm holding up yeah. the world. <clears throat> I don't touch. But anyway, I anymore. go for my. Uh, I go to talk to my doctor tomorrow. I, I go to talk to my doctor Good tomorrow. Good idea. <laughs> I go to talk. Do I share my screen? Hmm? Yeah. Why don't we all share our screens? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go see my doctor tomorrow, and he's going to tell me my latest PSA test. And it's like I. Uh, it's like I'm back in school again, going going for my grades. Mm -hmm. You know. But. Uh, Chances are he'll just tell me, oh, it's either gone up or it's gone down or it's done this or he's done that. Come back and see me in six months. Take another did blood you, test in six months. That's a good job. Did you jack off before your test? Hmm? Did you jack off before your test? No, 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 no. Three days beforehand, I don't touch my pee-pee at you all. Don't I, don't, I, 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 don't, I, I just cut my balls when I pee. I mean, I'm very careful. What, what about riding on the bike, the uh, stationary I bike? I didn't, didn't do that. Didn't do that for about four days beforehand. Sex before your PSA test. You know, and it'll probably still go up. You know, but uh, I got to get mine taken. I hope it's still zero. Well, it's got to be. You don't have a prostate. <laughs> yeah, but if I have cancer again, it won't be zero. But that should be. No, but you're not. You don't, you can't. Obviously, if they took it out and they haven't been able to find cancer, then you're free. You're home free. Then why do they keep telling me to come in and get the test? I don't and then know because I get a zero, and the he, guy says that's great. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about this. Uh, everything I've read online says if you're over 75, you should not be given a PSA test. Okay? Yeah. Just given it for charity? No, you should not be, be given a PSA test. My doctor is having me do a PSA test every six months. You know yeah. why? So I'll come back to him and stick his finger up my ass. He'll scope me with the probe. He, he'll charge like $500 for it. And... Uh, Come back and see me in six months. Now, did That's Vernon? Easy. Vernon, did you have uh, prostate cancer? Yes. Yes. And uh, do you still go for a PSA test? They, they didn't take your prostate out. They just shot you no. up with uh, uh, chemo. Once or something? a year, when I get my physical done, they run the PSA, and it's yeah. still it's it's like 0. 0.5. Wow. Like, what 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 did they do to you? Give you the uh, hormones or the? No, I did uh, radiation treatments for nine weeks. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. You know, there are all kinds of ways of handling it, you know. They say, in fact, at, at my age, I shouldn't even get a, they shouldn't even give me a biopsy because it's more, the biopsy is more dangerous than the effect it will have in solving any problems. And at your age, they won't even give you an autopsy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, they say that, uh, that at my, uh, that, that over, over 75, uh, the benefits of of a PSA test are almost negligible, you know, in, because it'd be 15 years before you would get prostate cancer, or it would be dangerous enough, and and by then you'll probably be dead from something else anyway. That's the th philosophy on it. Yes, yes Jeffrey. How about if I'm 74 and a half? 
Well, <laughs> it's like little kids. I'm three and three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they say that after, after, especially after 80, no, no, no um, um, biopsies. They're, they're, they're more dangerous than they are, you know, because something like 5% of the time biopsies become infected. Yeah. Oh. I had two biopsies before they ripped it out. Yeah. And uh, they're no fun. My, my doctor told me he puts his people out. He puts you out. Yeah. yeah. Mine just put me down. He just said, you suck. When my biopsies were done, uh, they just used local anesthesia. Yeah, and, yeah. You, and yeah. it was okay. That's what they did with me. Did, did it bother you at all, uh, Vernon? Mm -mm. Did, did, oh, they, they snip it, and it, 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 it's awful. You know. wait, but wait a minute, it, but Vernon says it wasn't awful. Well, he didn't have Kaiser. When they do it at Kaiser, they only give you half a dose of the uh, lidocaine. <laughs> but you didn't feel anything, right? Oh, it was a, there was a little, there was a little bit of discomfort, but it wasn't painful. Yeah, yeah. That's because they stick tough. they stick a probe about that long up your ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and no. into your prostate. But he's already done that with me. He's already done a sonogram by shoving the probe up my ass and looking around. He hasn't found anything. You know. Yeah, but that, that probe doesn't take a piece of your prostate and, uh, no, that, so they can analyze. They took 14 pieces each time they did it to me. 14? Yeah. Uh, 14. Well, that's, Ki that's they Kaiser. They, they wanted to get two extras, Phil. I only had 12 apiece. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I got the gold plan. Well, there you go. <laughs> In any event, um, how high was your PSA, though, before you, uh, you had the, uh, uh, the radiation? Huh? Uh, it got to 9.2. 9.2? Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And that's not. Yeah, that's, that's about where mine was, but then it went up to 17, but I actually had a uh, uh, prostate infection. And uh, my nutritionist noticed it and said to have me get Cipero. I got Cipero, I was on it for a month, and it went back down to 9. Yeah, supposedly at my age, I can have 6.5 before they start worrying. You know, so. Yeah. I have a friend that uh, was at five, and he's um, 62, so he was really concerned about that. So yeah. I, I don't know what, uh, I haven't gotten back with him. How old is he? He's 62. And he had what, five? Five. Yeah, that, they, they start worrying about it, especially yeah. at 62. At my age, you see, what happens is uh, I'm 79. At 79, 80. The chances that you've got prostate cancer is about 70%. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my internist uh, said to me that it may even be higher than that. Uh, he said, but when you get to be 90, it's 100%. Oh, I mean, impressive. it's just the prostate, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not an invasive or catastrophic cancer. It's just, you know, your prostate has some cancer in it. You know. Hey, Tony, you see what you got to look forward to? I know. I'm getting worried. I mean, you just have a touch of the cancer. Well, at 62, yeah. you, don't, you don't want to have a high PSA <laughs> at 62. I did, my PSA didn't start going up till about a year and a half ago. Yeah, but it isn't yeah. much. You were like, what, one or one and a half, and now it's two? No, it's, no, it's 4.3. Oh, okay, so it's going up. Yeah, it's going up. But, you know, uh, it, it may be that I do have a little bit of the touch of the cancer. But, you know, he'll, hey, it was, they, it was nice knowing they, you, they, Alex. No, they have this thing called watchful waiting, and that's what he's doing. Yeah. Every six months, I get the blood test. And every six months, he looks yeah. at me and says, no, I don't see anything yet. Come back, you know. Uh, and uh, we'll just, I guess, keep doing this for the rest of my life every six months. That's a good point. Is that what I have to look forward to at this age, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It beats bypass surgery, right, Jeff? Uh, uh, well, bypass. You know, sometimes bypass is a, is a no-brainer. Hey, the and angioplasties he, were no-brainers. I mean, I was yeah. awake for them. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. The last time I had surgery, it was the simplest no-brainer surgery, and yet it's affected my... Uh, I'll say my brain. Really? Did, did did you did they open your chest for the uh, for these no. surgeries? No? no. How do they get in there? Well, not not for 
30 years. Oh. But, you know, originally 30 years ago, I had a open heart surgery. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. Now everything is catheterization. Yeah, they, they went into my wrist uh, on the first one, and yeah. it was uh, it was like nothing. Uh, the second time they did it, it was through the groin. That was a little yeah. different. You know, but it, it wasn't that. Yeah, but it wasn't that hard. I, you know, I mean, I uh, they didn't put me out. Uh, I, 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 I was in La La Land. Less space of procedure. Yeah. Why don't they put you out? What, what would hurt them to put you out? Imagine uh, they just I think there's more risk to going yeah. under anesthesia than there is to just put you in La La Land. These drugs affect the yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, like for instance, I, when I have my uh, colonoscopy they give me uh, the, the the michael jackson drug um propofol propofol, propofol. Yeah. and and that, that's wonderful i love that you know because so it's like they're editing out a part of your life I like that yeah. right you know that's it's like bad part uh okay and jeff you don't think that what you're experiencing might be related to that earlier stroke you had when you were younger oh it could be but yeah. uh I don't think so because no. I had. Um, this is what old people talk about. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think so. But. Hey, my no. prostate, the no. PSA is up. You know, it was <laughs> it, it was it went to a two nine, then it went down to a two five, then it went up to a three four, and then it went up to a four three. So it's 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 going back and forth. You know. Yeah. Wobbling around. So we'll see well, what that, happens tomorrow. For your age, that's still low. Oh, they say that uh, it should be up to 6.5 is the cutoff point at my right. age. So we'll see what it is. He'll probably tell me tomorrow it's 6.5. You know, you know, whatever. I Maybe asked him, I said, I, I said, if this rate, will my, do it again. I said, will yeah. my prostate ever have to go? And he said, no way. He said, the worst that will happen is we'll give you the hormones, and the hormones will bring your PSA right down. He said, because what, what the hormones do is it, it deprives you of, uh, of your testosterone. Uh, testosterone. And uh, they'll start talking like this. And, um, <laughs> and, and, well, and, can and, we see no, your tits? And, and what, <laughs> what take, it, it makes, allows the cancer to thrive is your testosterone. So yeah. they inhibit, to a certain extent, the testosterone. And he said, I've given, I, you know, the first time I give them a shot, I come, they come back about six months later and take a, uh, um, um, a test, a blood test, and they're down to like a 0.5. I mean, he says that you just see it drop precipitously, mm -hmm. you know, so. He said that's what we'll probably do with you if we need to do anything. Yeah. Get a shot. What the hell? Yeah, sure, I'd want to. Well, it's a form of castration. In fact, wow. that was one of the things I saw online on how they can solve prostate cancer is by removing your testicles. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. I've so you want that. to have kids? Is that what you're saying, and my, and my answer to them is, if you do that, please kill me. Okay. <laughs> I had a guy that was working for me. He was in his 60s. He, he had a heart attack and died, but uh, he had pr uh, prostate cancer, and that's what they did is they... Uh, uh, I guess they chemically they castrate them, or in in one way or another, exactly. they try to slow down the cancer. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but you know, what that? What the hell? So tomorrow night I'll either be telling you that I have to. Well, I I just don't want a, um, a what do you call it? A um, um, biopsy. That's all. I don't want to go through that. Yeah. Uh, well, now the good ones, the, the way they do the biopsy is they do the sonogram, and then they do an MRI. Uh, they do the MRI, and then with the sonogram, they can see exactly where they're going in th uh, three-dimensionally, and they can go in, and they can get the sample, and they're not routing around hoping that they well, find it no, like they do no, with Kaiser. No MRI for me. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. But, uh, no. Whoops. Whoops. Very loud. Oh, ah. uh, no, what they do, Phil, is uh, they use the the sonogram probe and the sonogram probe can see what's there and then they do the biopsy with that that's what they yeah. do okay but he's already looked at me that way and he's also done the finger thing and everything he can't find anything but did he kiss you 
Yeah, gave me flowers. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I, we got to go. Uh, everybody, thank you so very much. Thanks to Bree for having been here earlier. Mm-hmm. Vernon, good to see you again tonight. Yeah. Uh, always fine to see you, Phil. Nice seeing you. Uh, and uh, Scott and your brother-in-law. Uh, Mike. With a much nicer beard than you have. And, and watch it. He'll, he makes knives. He'll cut you. Right. Uh, and, and Tony, thank you. And, of course, the greatest beard we have. I mean mm-hmm. that. In, not, it's not like he's. I'm not I gay. Around with gay. Okay. Women. Yeah, right. Anyway, it's Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Hey, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay? There we go. Ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, that's our our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just uh, hang up on them and get rid of my Skype. So the next program, which is Jack Bishop and the uh, Intersection, uh, can use it. Um, that'll, be, that'll be next. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, it's time for me to get out of here. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, we have uh, the sports show on at nine thirty at uh, eight thirty. Eastern Daylight Time at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. We've got Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. And then at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, I'll be back, hopefully not with cancer. Uh, and uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.